Good morning, I'm Maddie Jansen, and this is the podcast of 17 News at Sunrise. It's everything you need to know to start your day in about 15 minutes. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The county asks for help managing the outbreak at a local nursing home. Plus, why officials say the spread there is slowing Kern's efforts to reopen. The Senate Health Committee will hold a hearing on reopening our country amid the COVID-19 pandemic later today. What the nation's top infectious disease doctor is expected to say about the efforts underway right now. And the loss of a local legend, one of the last original members of the Bakersfield Sound passes away. We'll have a look back at the life of Charles Fuzzy Owen on this Tuesday, May 12, 2020. Good morning. It is 5 a.m. on this Tuesday, and it is going to be a beautiful day here in the Golden Empire. Maddie, I know that it was probably windy up in the mountains yesterday. Uh, here on the valley floor, it was very windy, especially as those temperatures just started to plummet, and it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. Chilly start, though. Yeah, yesterday it was beautiful all day. As I was laying in bed, that's when I started to notice those winds pick up and the trees blowing around like crazy, Kev. What are those winds bringing our way? Well, they're going to be windy uh, conditions up in the mountains again today. In fact, there's a wind advisory for you, so uh, expect more winds. Here in the valley, I don't expect the winds to be as strong, but they did pick up a little bit yesterday afternoon into the evening, and temperatures were cooler than what we were seeing on Mother's Day when we were in the mid-90s. Yesterday, we were in the mid-80s. We talked about about a 10-degree cool down, and we did see it. 86 was the high for Monday. Normally, we should be right around 82 this time of year, and 103 the record, and that was set back in 1934. As we take a look at the temperature now, 61 degrees in Bakersfield with a northwest wind at 8. And as we take a look at the dog walk forecast for today, we're featuring Bear Garcia and he's uh, lounging around looking at his owner saying, hey, when can I go out for that walk? In fact, Bear Garcia is uh, the dog of our editor, Miguel Garcia. 63 degrees by 8 a.m. and you can see we'll rise into the mid-70s this afternoon. And again, I've been getting a few pictures, so I'll be showing those as we go throughout the next uh, several days. But if you'd like to have your pet featured, you can send it to Kevin Charette at KGT.com for our dog walk forecast. Here's a look at Tatchby right now. 48 degrees on the temperature. A west-northwest wind at 16, so still breezy up that way. And again, the wind advisory in place until 11 o'clock this evening for the uh, mountain and desert regions. Uh, temperatures in the mountains today will rise into the upper 50s to lower 60s. I'll have more in your forecast. That's coming up in a little bit. But first, we will send it back over to you. All right. Thanks so much, Kev. Now to the latest numbers on the coronavirus outbreak in Kern County. Public Health confirms 32 new cases of COVID-19. Public health officials say they were, at, were averaging about 30 new cases every day. That brings our total to nearly 1,300. 15 people have died. 759 people have recovered from the virus. More than 10,000 tests have come back negative, And more than 2,500 tests are pending. Our hospitalization rate continues to rise, especially those in ICU. 39 people are in the hospital right now with 27 people in ICU. Current Chief Administrative Officer Ryan Alsop says half of those in the hospital are from the Kingston Healthcare Facility. Meantime, the county is requesting more help to manage the outbreak at Kingston Healthcare, a nursing home in Bakersfield where COVID cases have exploded in recent days. More than 100 people at the facility have been infected. That's 46 healthcare workers and 62 residents. Nine people have died. The state medical assistance team has sent 39 health care workers to help fill the staffing shortage at Kingston. Public Health Director Matt Constantine says he is asking those workers to stay an extra week. We've been following this outbreak closely and have a closer look into Kingston's record. The facility's history is dotted with lawsuits, citations, and accusations of poor care. You can get caught up at KGET.com. Just click on the hot link icon. County officials say the deadly outbreak at Kingston Healthcare Facility has slanted the county's coronavirus numbers and is slowing the county's efforts to reopen. Last week, Governor Gavin Newsom released guidelines for phase two of reopening. Kern County meets all the governor's criteria except two. First, no COVID related deaths in the past 14 days. Kern has seen 10 deaths. Second, no more than one case per 10,000 people in the past two weeks. 
For Kern's population of 900,000, that would mean no more than 90 new cases in the last two weeks. We've seen 468. But according to the county, many of Kern's cases and deaths come from Kingston Healthcare. 8% of the county's cases, 60% of the deaths, and nearly half of the hospitalizations. Now the county is asking the governor to not let one nursing home affect the entire county's ability to advance through phase two. The county. We've actually been talking to the state since last week about testing all of the skilled nursing facility employees and all of the residents. We've even offered county resources to the state to get this done. The county is, expect, is encouraging local business owners to give their input to Governor Newsom directly. If you would like to do that, you can go to covid19.ca.gov. The time now is 5.05 and starting today, people all around Kern County will have easier access to free COVID-19 testing. During their bi-weekly news conference yesterday, public health officials announced six new testing sites will open by the end of the week. Today, a site at the Health Department Clinic in Arvin will open up, along with the North of the River Veterans Hall in Oildale and Westside Healthcare District in Taft. Opening tomorrow is a testing site at the Delano Regional Medical Center. And later this week, sites at the Kern Valley Hospital and Ridgecrest Hospitals are expected to open. Unlike state-sponsored sites, these areas don't have screening criteria. Anyone who wants to get tested can. Early on, of course, we were testing those that were very ill, uh, likely hospitalized. Um, we are on the other end of this now where we're looking for those that have not had symptoms yet or not been diagnosed. Kern also has three state-sponsored test sites open to essential workers and those with symptoms. There's one at the fairgrounds, one at the Richard Prado Center in Northeast Bakersfield, and one in Mojave. For information on all the county's testing sites, head to our website, kget.com. Happening in just a few hours, the Senate Health Committee is holding a hearing on the COVID-19 pandemic. Senators are supposed to hear an update on what federal, state, and local governments are doing to help Americans go back to work and back to school as rapidly and safely as possible. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, says he will talk about the dangers states could face if they open without following recommended guidelines. That's according to an email he sent to the New York Times. NBC News will air an, a special report for the Senate hearing that's coming up this morning, right after 17 News at sunrise at 7 a.m. Meantime, many states in the U.S. are already getting back to business, opening gyms and dining restaurants. And that's the subject of today's 17 Interactive Feedback Poll. We're asking, do you believe the U.S. is opening too soon? Call or text us at 888-4617. Press 1 if you think it is and 2 if not. You could also text, tweet, email, or Facebook your comments. Once again, our interactive feedback phone line is 888-4617. We'll air some of your comments and have the first results coming up at 530. Before we move on, we want to mention one of our own here at KGET has tested positive for the coronavirus. And following the guidelines from the CDC, we took immediate steps to uh, have our colleague voluntarily self-quarantine as well as others who may have been exposed. In your 17 Crime Watch, police have identified the suspect they're looking for in connection with the deadly shooting in East Bakersfield last week. It happened on Thursday on Whitlock Street near 3rd Street. The victim was 22-year-old Jesse Alvarez. Bakersfield police are looking for 28-year-old David Campos. He's wanted for murder and gang charges. If you know where he could be, call police at 327-7111. New here at sunrise, a man's under arrest accused of crashing into a motel and then tossing a gun as he ran from police. Officers were called to the Motel 6 at California Avenue and Easton Drive just before 9 o'clock last night to find a car had crashed into the building. Police say the driver took off running. Officers gave chase and the driver allegedly tossed a firearm as he tried to get away. The man was caught and taken into custody without incident. He did not appear to be hurt. It's unclear what caused the crash. Not one, but two crashes temporarily shut down Highway 178 near Lake Isabella. The first happened yesterday afternoon around 3 o'clock at 178 in Yankee Canyon Drive. One person died in that crash. The second crash involved a, a car that went off the roadway and sparked a fire. That second crash happened in the same area around 4.30 yesterday. Flames from the car spread to nearby grass, and as you can see right here in this video, it quickly spread. 
At last check, the Kern County Fire Department says 12 acres have burned and the fire is 50% contained. We're told crews stayed out there all night to put out hot spots. And now to the passing of one of the last original members of the Bakersfield Sound. Charles Fuzzy Owen, along with his cousin Louis Talley, signed Merle Haggard to his first recording contract in 1962. Owen became Haggard's lifelong friend and closest confidant and was Haggard's manager for years. Owen and Tally performed at the Blackboard Cafe before it became one of the central, iconic venues for the Bakersfield Sound. In an interview with 17 News last year, Fuzzy Owen talked about his love of country music. Country music is three chords and the truth. I like country music because it's real. Everything else is songs. Fuzzy Owen was 91 years old. Well, new rules for the White House today after two staff members tested positive for coronavirus. Tracy Potts has that story, plus the latest from Capitol Hill, funding the fight to reopen the country. With two staffers infected, the White House is now requiring masks, temperature checks, and daily testing for senior staff. If somebody wants to be tested right now, they'll be able to be tested. That may be true in the White House. It's hardly true anywhere else. Democrats want to include coronavirus testing in the next stimulus, plus state aid, food stamps, and hazard pay for first responders. We need to take a pause here. We can't borrow enough money prop the economy up forever. Hunger doesn't take a pause. The rent doesn't take a pause. Uh, the hardship doesn't take a pause. Congress still at odds over the money as they prepare to hear remotely today from three health experts under quarantine after being exposed. An unpublished White House report obtained by NBC News shows coronavirus cases rising in rural areas, one as high as 650 percent in a week. Dr. Anthony Fauci is expected to warn that reopening the country too soon could lead to needless suffering and death. Tracy Potts, NBC News. And joining us now to tell us more about Police Memorial Week, also talking about openings for the police trainee position for the academy, is Sergeant Nathan McCauley, the public information officer with the Bakersfield Police Department. Uh, Sergeant McCauley, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Well, let's talk a little bit about the significance of this week because, you know, typically this is a very somber week uh, that the public is able to attend these memorials. There are several across the county. Um, and, and again, it is still a very somber week as um, we remember those that have lost their lives, um, uh, you know, in the line of duty. Talk a little bit about the significance of this week. Well, absolutely. As, as a police officer, it's very important to remember those that came before you and those that gave their lives for serving their community here. So regardless of the circumstances, we can't have some of the events that we would like to have, but it's still very important to all of us to make sure that we still remember those and we still continue to, to you know, remember who they were and what they did for our community. And so we'll still have events. We'll still have things that's just going to look different. We'll have a lot more things that are virtual based and video based, but still make sure that we are able to, to recognize them during this week. Again, you know, we talk about what everyone's doing. Things are uh, looking a little different right now. People are working from home. Um, a lot of our essential workers, of course, out and about uh, serving our community, including first responders, including uh, police officers. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about what our officers, what our local officers are doing right now admit, uh, you know, during the, during the middle of this pandemic? Well, for the most part, uh, a lot of our, our work is, is business as usual. They're still going to come to calls. They still want to make sure that they're there when you need us. Uh, there is some additional protective equipment. Uh, they're making sure that they take precautions, you know, keeping things as clean as possible, making sure that they're wearing appropriate protective equipment. They have a few extra measures that wouldn't be, have been in place before, but they want to make sure that they can still go to these calls because they still know that there's a need for them to go out to these. They just want to make sure that they can do it safely when they go around there. So there has been changes. There's been changes in kind of the way some of the shifts are run, some of the protective equipment, some of the cleaning supplies for that, um, the ways in which they'll respond to certain calls, making sure that people are wearing masks, things like that, which would definitely not mm -hmm. be something you would commonly see before this. Um, but it's right. uh, still making sure that we can still continue to serve the community uh, while doing so and keeping our officers and our staff safe. You know, Kern County, of course, shows uh, their respect when it comes to our local law enforcement officers. Um, what, what do you want our community to know about about the men and women who are, are serving this community, putting their lives on the line every single day? 
Well, I want them to know that we're still here and these people work very hard and they're definitely uh, working to do everything they can that uh, to keep our community safe, to make sure that they're still going out to all the calls for service as they would have before. Uh, we have a very dedicated group of people. They're very passionate about what they do and not just our sworn staff, top to bottom throughout our apartment. We have a fantastic place to, uh, to work as far as uh, just everything that you do, that you have a very dedicated group of individuals that really take care of one another and really strive to do their, their best job they can. And, and that's kind of what we'd like to do is, uh, in addition to Police Week, we're also trying to make sure that we prepare for the future of the police department and try to get uh, people to come out and apply for our positions. We're trying right. to, we're a growing department and we have some openings now and they just started running that application on uh, May 8th and it'll continue to run through June 5th. So there's an opportunity to see what it's like to be a police officer and, and become part of this department. Uh, it's a lot of exciting opportunities coming up over the next several years. Let's talk a little bit about this program or these new positions. And, and who are you looking for specifically? Who, you know, should come out and, and, and take a look at this position if they're interested? Well, obviously, there's qualifications as far as age and um, some basic qualifications that will be part of the testing as far as uh, physical abilities, things like that. But a lot of those are, are very basic. It's just a starting point to make sure that people are ready. But mostly we're looking for you know, ethical, professional, and responsible people. We want people that have that passion to serve their community, that want to be a part of this. Uh, we can teach you about the law. We can teach you. They can train you physically. But we want to make sure that the people that we're getting into this organization are starting off in the right place, that they want to do this for the right reasons, that they want to be a part of this, that they have um, the heart to to serve their community and want to go from that and we can help train and teach you the rest but it's got to start from a place where you're ethically and morally wanting to come in to do the right thing and then we can work on training you the rest of the way here um, but it's an out, it's an outstanding place to work there's so much variety in what you can do in police work you never know what you're going to do on any given day uh, the assignments you can go through in the 13 years i've been here i've been in patrol i've been in gang unit i've been in our civil service team i've been in homicide i've been in burglary i've been in internal affairs uh, and that's, I've worked with canine units. Uh, there's so many different areas you can go into. And that was just the career path that I've been on. There's several other areas that I've never worked in. There's plenty of uh, diversity as far as what you can encounter each day. It keeps things exciting. And our, our staff, top to bottom, the officers you work with and the other people in the department are fantastic. So it's really a, a good place to work. And the growth that we're having over the next several years will allow people to really have an opportunity to experience and uh, work in a lot of these different areas because there'll be a lot of opportunities as our department grows. Talk about a uh, wide variety of uh, things that you've done in the last several years. Sergeant Nathan McCauley, thanks so much for joining us here for 17 News at Sunrise and, and stay safe, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me.